I don't know whether anyone other than maybe that Moroccan television commentator could have possibly have got the four winners from the corner finals uh, correct. Um, and the one out of four wasn't too bad. I think my son, Jay Telfer, uh, coming in from Spain, also only got one out of four. But that's part of the beauty of this World Cup, isn't it? You just don't know what's around the corner. Can Morocco? Can Morocco go all the way? Anyway, I think Sam Malcolmson is with us now. Sam, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Brendan. How are you? Not so bad. One out of four, your performance on Friday afternoon with predictions. That's pretty good, isn't it? One out of four. <laughs> As I think probably the only person on the planet that uh, picked all four might have been the Moroccan television commentator who we've just listened to. Um, it's fantastic, isn't it? <laughs> it was, yeah. Uh, well, I suppose it's a, improbable, but probably a widely asked question today around the football world. Can Morocco go all the way? Uh, I don't know. If you'd have asked me three games ago, I would have said no. And then two games, I'd said no. And now there's one game to go. Uh, are they going to prove us wrong for three times in a row? If you don't concede goals, you don't lose games. And they won't, they won't, the only goal they've conceded has been an own goal in the last ten matches. Hmm. So, I mean, the defence is pretty watertight. But uh, France will either get knocked out or they'll win by, a pick in, win by four or five goals. So what are Morocco doing uh, that is so effective to stop teams from scoring? I mean, I you, 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 were, you were a, 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 defender. a defender, a back of some description. Uh, are you picking up anything that they're doing that's different from anybody else? No, what, what they're really doing is playing collectively. And, and I think they've got, they've got the system and they play for each other. I mean, you, you, you watch another game, I was watching the other day, one guy beat, I think it was a Portuguese guy, beat the, beat the Moroccan guy, and then all of a sudden he had players with him. And I think that they're very fit and they play to a system that they believe in and everybody's part of it. And, and, and I think that uh, the, the team spirit has got together the more they've gone on. And I think they just believe in themselves that they can't get beat. <laughs> The up against France, I imagine some of these guys in the Moroccan team probably play in French competitions, so they probably know something about them as well, so they'll have a little sort of inside knowledge of how they go. Um, so let's talk about the French and the English. You were adamant with me on Friday that England were going to win that match. Uh, they didn't. Uh, you could argue they came close, I suppose, when you look at that scoreline. But um, how do you see that game? Do you, do you think they were the better and team on were, the day? Of course they were, Brendan. If you've watched the game, you must have been watching and don't think the French would win it. You must have been eating a, a bit of French food at the time. But I'll tell you what, England, England were the best. England were the better team of the two. And I think that, uh, unfortunately, uh, the referee didn't help them. And I, I don't always want games where you blame the referee. But in the last couple of matches, the referees have been shocking, you know, for the standard of players and, and the standards where mm. we are in the number one competition in the world, football-wise. And I, I think that uh, I mean, France's first goal you know, came when uh, Saka, further up the field, had been flattened by a a French defender, and the referee plays on. I mean, he can't play on to a, to an obvious free kick, and he wasn't even going to get the penalty for uh, you know for for the Mount being knocked down. It, it just to me. Is there, not, is there not a case, as I thought I heard one of the commentators infer early on in the first half, that at this level the referees are just letting a little bit more go? They're allowing a bit more physical contest or physical competition for the ball. That's a good thing, isn't it? That's a, a very much a good thing. But it's still, there's a right way and a wrong way where you can have physicality. I mean, if you hit, if you hit two guys head on and they're going for the ball, no problem. But if, if one guy's got away from you and you trip him up, it doesn't matter. That's, that's a foul. It's a free kick. And that's, that's what didn't happen. And if, if a guy's gone for a ball and somebody comes and pushes him and knocks him down, that's a free kick. Mm. You know, physicality, no problem whatsoever. I agree with you. It's, it stops us falling for nothing. Uh, but I, I just believe that, um, that I thought England was the better team. Uh, 
Okay. And I, again, uh, the winning goal was given away by uh, the weakness in the England team, which was uh, the two centre backs. Okay, I bowed your superior knowledge there, but I will call to the witness stand to help bolster my case, a guy by the name of Peter Schmeichel, who I'm sure you don't need any introduction for. He said on television yesterday in the panel discussion afterwards, trying to put one of the English ex-players in his place, that you cannot have a team like France scoring two goals from free play, from the field of play, England scoring none uh, from the field of play. You can't have a team that scores two goals and the opponents none um, not winning the match. Ah, yeah, that's true. But again, uh, Peter, being a goalkeeper, has limited intelligence. And what happened was that, what about the free kick before France scored the goal? So if that had been done properly, they wouldn't have scored two goals. They would have scored one. You know, and and, and that is the difference in in when they would score it. So in actual fact, the game would have ended 1-0. And I think, and I understand what he's saying, Brendan, and uh, the team that scores the most goals still wins. It doesn't matter whether it's in penalties or not Mm, penalties. Sure. Mm. Um, Yeah, I mean... uh, Football, you can't make comparisons with other sports, I suppose, but I guess the nearest thing in rugby is a penalty try to uh, a penalty kick in football. But in rugby, the referee has the discretion, as I guess the referee does in football, although the VAR comes into it in the same in in rugby. But the, the rules of rugby state that a referee has to be sure in his own mind that a try would probably have been scored if the foul play hadn't taken place. Um, I don't know whether that's the same in football, is it? Although I don't think it's a matter of whether a goal would have been scored. It's simply judged purely on the act itself, isn't it? That's the way I understand it, Brendan, yeah. It's on the act itself. Uh, They can play advantage, say, for example, Mm. uh, Harry Kane had been fouled uh, by a centre-back and but at the same time, when they had that uh, collision, the ball went in the net. Now if he's going to get so there's a, every likelihood he would play advantage and give the goal, uh, you know, and not and not come back if it was an attacking player in the box. There. Mm. Okay, to the England team, a lot of them had some very good games, and um, I think it was a very good performance. They 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 weren't overshadowed, or they won't they weren't. Um reduced to also runs in the match. But a couple of things. Why why would Southgate have taken Saka off there? I thought he was probably the most elusive, well, nearly the most, if not the most elusive Englishman on the field. Uh, you and 50 million British people <laughs> answered the, ask the same question. I mean, that's one of his big, uh, his big issues. I like Southgate as a person. The players obviously believe in him and like him. But the, the only failure he seems to have had in this competition and the one previous, he, he substitutions, you know, bamboozle everybody. Because he, bring, he brought on Sterling. Sterling hasn't played there for two games. Sterling's been his, his fitness or, or his lack of training because he was uh, at home because his house was burgled. And uh, so uh, putting sort of Sterling on to me didn't make any sense. And mm. I don't think it made sense to any people. Mm. Is Southgate done now? Oh, he said he's going to decide. I, I, the trouble is, I heard the rumour the other day that uh, Arsene Wenger might like the job. Mm. You know, mm. but I mean, he would be wonderful. But the guy's over. The guy's uh, your age, Brendan, seventy odd, and so. You wonder how much can a, can a 70 year old take the pressure mm. off qualifying for the World Cup, etc. Well, Louis Van Gaal, I think, or Van Hal, I think, is 70, isn't he? He hasn't done a bad job with the Dutch. Yes, there was a discussion on the panel afterwards yesterday about uh, whether or not, I think Schmeichel was saying, uh, you've just got to get the best person for the job and drop all this silly stuff about, oh, no, it's got to be an Englishman, it's got to be an Englishman. No, you, you want to get, you've got the money to spend, you want to go after the best player for the job. It's a bit like, I suppose, the All Black coaching position here, I think there's a large portion of New Zealand rugby fans would be aghast if they went offshore to get a coach. But in this world of professional sport, you have to be entitled to go wherever you think the best person is, it, don't you? And same in English football. I agree with you. That's, that's right. But it has to, be, has to be somebody who has a better manner about him. 
because, you know, we've had people in the past, foreign people, and they've, they've only lasted a, a couple of years, lack of performances, la language difficulties. And, uh, I mean, a lot of these players, they, they expect the best. And, they, and also at the time, they expect the best. They want, they want to try and win. I mean, it's, it's vital that England win a competition in the next number of years, but because they've gone so long without winning, and yet when we talk about the best league in the world, we talk about EPL, uh, and usually when we talk about football, we talk about England, and it's, it's, they haven't shown up when it comes to the competition. So the manager is, it would be very crucial, Brendan, and, and I think that... Uh, uh, that's what an Englishman or a British person would be ideal uh, because it, it's just difficult. But I wouldn't mind Arsene Wenger because I mean, obviously. Well, he knows he knows English done, football for a start off, doesn't he? Uh, uh, absolutely, he knows what it's like and he knows how he handles it. And he's got great respect because obviously, doing his twenty years there, every one of these players would know who he was and what he was. Mm. Okay, to the. Um other performances of the weekend, Croatia, um, upsetting Brazil, uh, surprised? Outstanding. It wasn't, and it was, because the thing was, when Brazil went up, when we went 1-0 up, you'd thought that would be the game. But there was an arrogance. There was an arrogance with Brazil where all of a sudden, uh, you know, they got knocked, they got knocked out by that, that equaliser. It was... Suddenly they expected they could win, and there was you know they didn't have to try anymore. They, and they would sort of be put on this flowery show, you know, knocking the ball to each other and being away. And they sort of didn't realise or underestimated how Croatia play. They play to the final whistle. They just sort of they scratch, they claw, they do everything they can. When some team beats them, they love them. They love them. But the pity for that because that is definitely the way Croatia play, right to the very end. Uh, are, they good, are they good enough? Or well, I suppose they are. Can you, well, let's just have some predictions here. Argentina and um, Croatia, who's, Croatia. Your, who's your pick? I, I, I'm going to pick Argentina. I'm going to pick Argentina for the... Forget, forget the Messi, who's a big plus, but I think Argentina and Croatia play the same sort of game. Where the physicality, uh, knocking about, nullifying each other, playing the same system, a lot of things happen in that way. And I just think Argentina probably got more more players uh, of that quality who can take them there. I mean, it's like they've got some outstanding players who play for for Croatia, and it's I just feel that Argentina. I've just got that little bit, but they're very close, very okay. close. And France, Morocco. <laughs> oh, probably. imagine it's like, yeah, it's like being on a tightrope, isn't it? You know, one, one, one either way. I, I think, for, you know, my my head tells me France is going to win, and my heart tells me Morocco is going to win. It's going to be that sort of game, and I think if France go, if France score first, then they could run away with it. Mm. Mm. Yes, but not many countries do score against Morocco, as, that, right. as you pointed <laughs> That's out. The thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, anyway, it's still all ahead of us. Only three matches left in the Football World Cup, but gee, it's gone quickly, hasn't it? It's gone very quick, isn't it? Yeah, we, we, I think I think there's I think there's four matches because they have the third place playoff. Um, nobody wants to play in. Sam, just before you go, one thought. Later today I'm going to speak to, or this afternoon, Ivan Vuksic, and I've had a brief conversation with him on the phone about this introduction of this uh, Oceania Professional Football League, which is coming, uh, backed, I imagine, by FIFA money. It's all being thrashed out up there in Doha, and I see Infantino saying this is a win-win situation. It's going to lift the standard of football. But um, Ivan Vuksic is concerned that there's just no room for it on the current uh, domestic calendar. His team, Auckland City, played 42 matches this year over four different leagues. Where on earth, I think he's going to say, uh, do you find room for a, a professional league? Look what happened to rugby when they went professional. Um, club rugby in this country, the amateur game basically is on its knees. Is something similar going to happen to football in this country if you bring in this professional Oceania League? What say you? Yes, I, I agree with Ivan. 
the, the fact is that there is too much football at times for successful teams like Auckland. And even, even you know, going with these teams play the Chatham Cup, they play league matches, everything else. I think it's too much. And I think that people outside New Zealand, you know, FIFA, who are looking at things, you can't treat New Zealand like every other like every other country. I, I think very much that we, it should just be left alone mm. uh, and go on with it because that's the best way for New Zealand football to progress. OK, thank you, Sam. We'll talk to you later in the week uh, after we've had a look at these uh, semi-finals coming up, I think, on Wednesday and Thursday morning uh, New Zealand time. The uh, two semi-finals and then, of course, next weekend, I think it's Sunday night, is the final of the that's Football right. World Cup. That's right. Thank you, Sam. Right. You have a nice day. Thank you. It thank is you as well. Okay, thank you. It is exactly one thirty here on the platform.